I'm Jeremy from Pink Orange, and this is why you should care about the Polaris RZR. If you haven't been living under a rock, you definitely know about the Polaris RZR, uh, especially if you like ATVs or side-by-sides. But do you know why the RZR is so important and what it did for the sport today? If we go back uh, to the 80s, where Honda introduced the ATC three-wheeler, and then in the 90s, we, everybody's kind of making four-wheelers, but they were very rudimentary work vehicles. We had, you know, hunters and farmers were pretty much buying them, but the leisure sport wasn't really developed. Uh, that's where we see the beginning of the side-by-sides uh, with the John Deere Gator and the Mule, which was very much so of a workhorse, for work sites or farms. It wasn't really a leisure vehicle. Some hunters were using them, but these things barely had any suspension and most of them had lawnmower engines. If we fast forward into the early 2000s, they start making ATVs with more suspension, independent suspension. A lot more people come into the market and are introducing different things. And this is where Yamaha brought the Rhino. The Rhino was one of the first side-by-sides to actually be used recreationally and they modified it and did a bunch of stuff with the, the Yamaha Rhino uh, and then Yamaha did nothing with it. Um, Polaris had the Ranger, which was the competition to the Rhino, uh, which was a machine with a box and seats where you had some suspension for comfort, but it was a work play vehicle and that's what all the manufacturers thought people wanted. If they're buying a side by side, they're going to work with it. They want a box. Uh, and this is where in 2007, Polaris unveiled the RZR, but it was actually the Ranger RZR. So again, with the focus on the box, they brought in a sporty machine, uh, which came out on a 2008 model in an 850 inch wide machine that was more geared towards the sport riding and less geared towards the work, almost no work. Fast forward from there, and a few years later, they brought out the S model because this sport was growing and people were riding them leisurely, but they were also driving them crazy and doing stuff they shouldn't be doing with it. So they brought out a 60 inch machine, which had way more suspension and, and just got the sport kind of kicked off. Again, they were the only ones doing a sport UTV. And then in 2011 is probably where you see the most modern uh, side by side to date, which was the introduction of the XP chassis. The XP chassis came out with a 900. It had suspension that was derived from desert racing and it just, it just was a completely new experience. You could tackle rough terrain and really just go crazy with this machine. Um, and it wasn't meant to play. It wasn't meant to work. Sorry. It was meant to play. So you could just have fun with it. And there was a huge market for it from there there's competition that came in. Arctic Cat came in with theirs, Can-Am came in with theirs. Can-Am actually came in a little bit later with a fully sport machine, but they were thinking about the sport side of things. Yamaha even came in with it, but Polaris was at the forefront. And if you keep going along the lines a few years later, in about 2014, 2015, it, 2014 is when they hit the 100 horsepower mark. And Can-Am actually did that before Polaris. So not only were we getting suspension, but now we're getting the power to be added into it. And then fast forward a couple of years. So we are now in 2014 and Polaris has its aging XP900, still a good machine, but then the Maverick came out with a 1000 and they beat them to the 100 horsepower mark. Uh, suspension was kind of, it was derived from their commander. So it's kind of like a shitty machine, but it had horsepower and everybody drag raced and Can-Am was winning. So, that kind of went on for a few years until 2016 when both brands finally came out with turbos uh, where the RZR actually had the upper hand. They came out with 164 horsepower and it was just a crazy machine. Their XP chassis was, was very much developed and you can even find it on sale today. So it's still a very much a modern machine with way more horsepower than what they had before. The Maverick came out just prior to them with 121 horsepower. So very anemic compared to the Polaris and on the shitty Maverick platform until they actually developed the X3 platform, which now you have a real direct competitor with the RZR, which is focused and was solely built to be a sport machine. 
Uh, and then after a couple of years of the turbo and all this stuff, there's not many places you can go with the sport machine or, or that we could think of. Um, but Polaris in 2018, once again, stepped it up a notch again with two different machines. They gave us the RS1, which is a single seat RZR, but still 64 inches wide. So the first and only machine in the category, there's nobody else makes one, which is 100% based on handling and the best riding experience you could have. And they brought the Turbo S. So this is where you're starting to get the real high performance, ultimate side-by-side, -side, the machine you buy turnkey, don't modify, and the thing's crazy. It was 72 inches wide, uh, it still had that turbo engine, but way more suspension. And then you start the battle with Can-Am and Polaris, battling it out over these additions of machines, bringing you up to 2020. 2020 brings you to the machine that's behind me, which is the XP Pro, which is the newest RZR to come on the market and the most advanced RZR. So it's 181 horsepower. They were able to get all the suspension travel from the Turbo S, which was 72 inches, and fit it in a 64 inch chassis uh, with all the technology and the, the electronic suspension and, and all the things that you can think of to make the ultimate riding experience. And, and really, it all started with a 50 inch, 800cc anemic machine. And now it's not 50 inches, it's not anemic. You could jump it in the air, you could do all kinds of crazy stuff. So thank you, Polaris. Having driven a lot, I actually drove the X3. Uh, which is similar, but the X3 feels maybe a little bit more sloppy if I'm biased. Uh, and I actually built my own turbo machine, but it's just the suspension and, and everything put together in, in the package that's there is just crazy. You just can't beat it. It's crazy because you can go 130 kilometers an hour pretty much over every terrain without slowing down and you don't lose control. And it's actually comfortable. Like you probably hold a glass of water inside and you wouldn't spill any. In conclusion, that is why you should care about the RZR, because without the RZR, the sport side-by-side -side market would not be what it is today. So you should get off your butt, go buy one, go have fun, go experience it, bug a buddy that's got one, make sure you get to ride one. Be sure to take some pictures and tag us or short videos. Don't do anything stupid. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, leave a comment. We'll see you next time.